Ah, did not want to be doing this today. Um, okay. So we just got the news. Um, I guess it's been about an hour and a half now that uh, Julius Randle's season is over. Um, Randle, uh, New York's three-time all-star power forward, two-time All-NBA um, entrant, and a guy who is climbing up the the list of the greatest Knicks of all time. Like regardless of what you what do you think about him, um, whether you've always liked him, hated him, somewhere in between. I mean, this is a guy who is just frankly one of the defining players of the franchise uh, since Patrick Ewing. You know, I mean. You could, I mean, Brunson obviously is, is doing some special things, but in terms of when you factor in longevity, you know, it's it's mellow and it's it's Julius, you know, over a, a span of nearly twenty five years. Um, and I want to start with that context because I think before we think about the impact on this year's team the impact on you know maybe even next year's team uh like we have to start just with julius and this is a franchise that unfortunately has had to deal with i would argue more significant injuries to their all-time greats than most i mean willis reed you know, among the top 75 players of all time, he's his games played is towards the bottom. And that's because his body just started breaking down in his late twenties. Bernard King was going to become one of the greatest scorers in the history of the league. And then, you know, we know what happened, missed two full years in the middle of his career. And a couple years after that had to rehab. And then the, and this is where my mind immediately went to today when I started writing about this is um, and check out if you haven't already next film school emergency newsletter in your inboxes um, is the Christoph Sprozingis injury, which feels similar to this in some ways and feels different in others. Um, I think the difference then is there's a lot of differences, but just one off the bat is when that happened, I was immediately like, Oh my God, our hopes as a franchise are just down the shitter. I don't feel that way today, and I'm going to try to not spin this into a positive. There's no way to spin this into a positive, but like at least try to contextualize the negatives and maybe add some color as to why they they th this is not the end of the world, because I don't think it is. But this is different in that I just feel bad for Julius. And this is a guy who, as anyone who's been watching me and listening to me for a while knows, I've not always had the best best relationship with. Um, but I have come to really appreciate the fact that he, in a league where just everybody at any given time, if they have an excuse not to play, like will will not play, this guy plays, and he gives it all when he's out there. Like he he we, we saw all the reporting. There was more reporting that emerged today. Basically, the reason why he put this off for as long as he did, even though, you know, it was it seems now in retrospect, pretty clear that this is probably where, where this was always headed, uh, although you wouldn't know as much from the reporting, which was just um, not the local beat guys. I'm talking about the national guys, which was just abhorrent from day from minute one, from the night of the, the incident, the night of the injury, abhorrent abhorrent that's the only word for it disgraceful reporting on this from the national uh media guys you know, obviously know who they are um but this is always the way this was heading and yet julius tried to put it off because he's like no if there's any if there's like whatever percentage chance that i can rehab this thing without surgery and be there for my team during the playoff run i'm gonna be there and that's because that's the sort of player he is it's the sort of person he is he wants to help he wants to contribute um he's not looking to take days off he's not looking to take an early summer vacation and only when as it was reported today there were like multiple doctors who looked at the the progress he had made and said listen it's it's not to the point where you're if you if you go out there with this you're going to re, re risk fucking this thing up a lot more and if you do the math 
he's getting the surgery today. It's already going to keep him out until at least early September, which is when they'll reevaluate. I think the hope has to be that he will be at least ready to, for training camp, which is a month after the, the scheduled reevaluation. Um, if he tried to come back and play, aside from putting off that timeline even further, if the injury worsened, well, now all of a sudden you're talking about not only losing this year, but you're talking about losing next year as well, or at least a massive chunk of next year. We'll get to that in a bit. But just back to this one, I think that's why he put it off. And I think the other reason he put it off, just aside from wanting to be there for his team, is, and I talked about this with Fred on the pod that dropped yesterday, which is um, which is that Julius, and Fred spoke about this on Cats and Shoot, his own podcast, Julius saw what this team was. And this is a guy who has been through a lot of losing in his career. It was basically nothing but losing with the Lakers. Losing season with the Pelicans, losing season when he first came to New York, obviously had the, the first the we the we hear team, but then more losing the year after that. And then it was last year, but even even with last year, he couldn't fully enjoy that because he was hurt in the playoffs. And now we he had the squad. Finally, he had the squad nine years into his career. And he saw what they could do. Because the proof is in the pudding. I mean, you know, we don't have to revisit January, but he saw what they could do. And now that has been taken away from him. And that is utterly heartbreaking. And I put him first in terms of who I'm thinking about today, but maybe not a close second, but definitely in second um, is us, the fans. And I know I've kind of spoken pretty openly about the fact that I never not that I was ever fully bought into this team. Obviously I was bought into the team, but like I I could never make the mental shift to this is the year I started this year with, this is the year before the year as they were doing what they were doing in January. I was watching it and I'm like, man, we are ahead of fucking schedule. We could really give pretty much any team a run for their money this year. And yet I, in my mind, they were always, I don't know what your top tier of contenders are. You know, Denver, Boston, OKC, maybe you want to throw another team or two in there. It was ne- they they would never they never I never put them over that line because I was like I still don't know you know, it still feels like maybe they're a piece away and I and yes, I fully understand the irony of what I am saying because the implication is like, all right, well, who's where's the upgrade coming from? And yeah, maybe you know what? Maybe it it was gonna come in the in the spot that Julius currently inhabits. Maybe it still is gonna come in the spot that Julius inhabits. But like, regardless of any of that, this was that was the best that was the best Knicks basketball that we have witnessed as a fan base in thirty years. Just full stop. It was the best. It was the best that we got a chance to see in all of that time. Um, and I don't think I'm overstating stating anything in, by by saying that because you like you have the net rating. Granted, the sample size was not the same as even last season or 2012, 13, or maybe some of the late 90s seasons. But like you have to go back to the 93, 94 team um, uh, to find a time when they were playing at that high of a level and and looked like their ceiling was that high. Because to me, 12-13, last year, 99, maybe 96-97 you could make an argument. But I, for me, what the, the sort of basketball that I witnessed them playing in January, to me, I it, you have to go back to, to me. For me, just, just me, you have to go back to 93-94 to find a team with that highest ceiling. Um, and we saw it. We got to see it for a month, and now it's gone. And that is, again, utterly heartbreaking and extremely unfortunate. And it's like, yeah, it's, I mean, it's just no word for it. It sucks. It sucks for us. It sucks for the team, not only Julius. I spoke about that already, but the rest of the roster who also saw that and also was a part of, part of that, except unlike us, and I guess Julius, they don't have the luxury of sitting and feeling sorry for themselves because they have a basketball game to play tonight. And then they have another one tomorrow night. And then they have another one two days after that. And I think 
there are two very interesting simultaneous conversations to have here about where they are now left with after this news, because, and I'm going to refer back to what I said a minute ago, which is like, this was never the year for me. It was always going to be the precursor to the year, whether that, whether that meant a big move this summer, whether they, whether that meant just like some kind of tinkering, you know, a probably you can't where the rosters at here's that. That's the thing though. The rosters at the place were like, what is tinkering really going to do? Like you're, not that you need a wholesale change, but like you were probably looking at some sort of semi major addition at the very least this summer, you know, and w- whatever that was going to be. I thought, I thought there would be a move coming this summer. I still think there's going to be a move coming this summer. Although I do think this news makes it uncertain because, and again, this feels absolutely. I feel wrong saying it out loud, but like that there was at least some notion I had just speaking for myself. Maybe others did not share this notion that potentially in order to reach the next level, you, you, you you have to upgrade one of your two top primary shot creator spots. And that means either adding someone, you know, and pushing Julius down to third or, swapping out Julius for another spot. And then with the salaries, it becomes a little bit trickier um, to do the former. But like all of that becomes a little more complicated now because, you know, Julius is obviously undergoing the surgery. He's going to be rehabbing. So who knows where where that's going to be and what the what the what the what the what the conversation around that is going to be come late June, early July. So I think that adds a complicating factor. But. What I'm and and I'm going to. I'm going to try to end with, with some kind of a positive, not a positive spin, but like the hopes that we had for next season and hopefully the next few seasons with Jalen Brunson being the age he is and really the entire core, DiVincenzo, Hart, Hardenstein, hopefully he's back, you know, Mitch, um, whom I've deuce, how, how good has he been? And OG Ananobi. And uh, yes, I've avoided saying OG Ananobi's name for this long on purpose because I kind of want to save him for last. But like all of those pieces, and Julius, by the way, who's not yet 30 years old, all of those pieces are still in place. All of the Knicks draft picks, like that they had yesterday, they still have today. Um, so like and and if you and again, I'm I'm loath to believe anything that I read when it comes from this basketball team right now, and you know where Woj got this, Woj got this from the team. I I still think the hope has to be that Randall, this surgery will make Randall maybe not as good as new, but like he'll be okay after this. He could be back to being Julius Randall. So any hopes that we had for next season, I, I still, and beyond, I still think they should be there. You know, that doesn't change the emotional gut punch of this news, but it does add for me, at least some important context. It, and, and this is where I draw the line of differentiation between when Porzingis went down, because like when he went down, you knew he was going to miss the entire next season. And the team was in fucking no man's land there. And you felt like, all right, if they get anywhere, people are going to have to look at Porzingis and look at his ceiling and say like, all right, I want to go play for the Knicks because they have that dude and he could do special things. Well, all of a sudden when he went down in a heap against Milwaukee, that all went up, not maybe not in smoke, but it all came into question the team is in a 180 degrees different place right now. They have already, they are already an established commodity. They have a culture. They have a way of going about their business on the court and off the court. None of that is changing. So whether you look at it from like an asset perspective, from a roster perspective, from like a culture perspective, like the future is still very bright, which is why, for as devastating as this news is and for as as much as it feels like the wind has now officially been taken out of our sails this season i don't i i cannot get too down about it at least relatively speaking and i say relatively speaking like in comparison to like on the range of losing an all-star or all-star caliber player to a season ending injury where does this rank i'll say this if i was a team like I, you know, I'm trying to think of a, a, a good comp this year. Like if I was a Celtics fan right now, 
and I, I, I got, I hope this doesn't happen because you don't wish injury upon anyone, but like if like Derek white or drew holiday um, or, or, you know, or Christoph Porzingis went down tomorrow with an injury that was going to keep them out for the rest of the year, my level of devastation would be exponentially higher than it is for me sitting here right now as a Knicks fan, because like that team is supposed to win the championship this year. They have a lot banking on this year. You know, I know Denver has already won one, but like they are one of the title favorites this year. Um, so like if they lost like even like a Contavious Caldwell Pope, you could argue that that would be more devastating because it would materially change their chances of winning a title this season. To me, I don't know that this materially, I mean, it changes their chances of winning a title because whatever number you would have attributed to it with a healthy Randall, you know, or close to a healthy Randall and with Ananobi, I think it was higher than zero. I don't know if it was one, two, three, four, five percent, six percent, so like whatever number you know you want to be optimistic and say ten percent. Yeah, it's it it it. I think it does go down to zero, um, but I don't think that's as big a deal as it would be to again some other teams who are more in the think of it, and more importantly than that, have more writing on this year because of impending financial concerns or whatever whatever the case may be. Um, Take the one from upstairs. Um, so um, that's where 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 I'm at. As my wife is coming to visit. Uh, the last thing I will I will say, and then we'll we'll move on. Maybe I'll get Andrew up here to offer his uh, perspective. Is that I don't think this season is over, um, because and and that rests on Adenobi. Um, it rests on Ananobi because right now what the Knicks have is a good team. Certainly they are a game above 500 since Randall went down. You, if you want to say, all right, well, if you take away the three games that Ananobi played, they're two games under 500. Well, sure. But then you should also not count the games that Brunson missed. And then they're back to being one game above 500. If you count those or 500, if you if you don't count the Cleveland game, either way, they're like a roughly 500 team. They're a slightly better than 500 team. Yes, their net rating is 11th in the league since January 27th. They've had some blowouts in here. This team, as currently constituted, is still capable of like blowing out a bad team on the right night, um, which I think colors that net rating a little bit. To me, they're like a little bit better than a middle of the road basketball team. You know, whether that's the 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, something like that. Best team in the league today, right now, as they are currently constituted, something in that range. I would probably say like 13, 14, 15, somewhere in there. You know, what is that? That's a six seed. That's a seven seed. Um, you know, that team could win a round against the right opponent. Honestly, like I don't, whoever they play in the first round and like, yeah, I guess today's news not that I was expect, honestly expecting Randall to come back before the end of the regular season, maybe the last game or something, but like it, 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 it really makes you want to secure that playoff berth. I'll say that. Um, I think they could win. They could win against pretty much anyone that they are likely to face in the first round. Um, Cause they're that tough and they're that, they're that sound in everything they do. But, I, they could also lose against any team in the first round as currently constituted. And that includes the magic. Like I, I, I feel like I keep watching the magic and keep waiting for them to come down to earth. And like, I watched them last night, like just put an absolute beat down on the Pelicans for the second time in several weeks. Pelicans have the fourth or fifth, whatever it is, best net rating in the sport this year. And the, the, the magic treat them like rag dolls. And that's not the only team they're doing it to. They've done that to a lot of teams. That's a tough, nasty team. So the notion that even this version of the this the Knicks team are going to beat Orlando, like even that's not a guarantee. If they get Ananobi back, though, and maybe everybody is sick and tired, especially after today's news of hearing if this, if that, whatever. Um, I, you know, I get it, but. I still have to hold out hope and belief that he can come back. Um, and me, I, again, I I don't know. Is that is that foolish? Maybe. 
Maybe. I don't necessarily think it is. So I still have hopes um, that he will come back, that they will be good when he comes back, and they could put a scare into almost any team. And I say almost any team purposefully because Boston still exists. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. I'm going to call Andrew up here. Um, and uh, actually, I'm going to ask you to take over the reins fully for about 30 seconds while I go handle some. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Right um, Give your thoughts and I'll be right back, okay? Okay. So John's going to be right back. And I want to thank everybody, about 1,100 people watching live with us between YouTube and Twitter. Uh, look, I, I echo John's sentiments. and I, I, I don't do this enough. I'd recommend his newsletter. Um, but I thought he, he captured all the feelings that we're having today um, pretty well and, and concisely through, throughout all the bullet points. Look, my, my reaction to this is just for Julius the human. Um, you know... The man, by all accounts, worked his butt off to, to keep himself in great shape. By all accounts, from the locker room, he's a leader to a lot of the the young kids that, that we've all grown to appreciate. Uh, did quickly, in his farewell letter, spoke glowingly about Julius. And imperfect player, yes. And, and look, I... <laughs> I feel like I get in more what could we get for Julius conversations than I do like can we win a championship like did we finally put the pieces together with him to um to finally make it work and I'm just I'm bummed that we're not going to find out this year. So, um you know, this is this is a blow. I I agree with John that the season's not over. I mean, it depends on Ananobi, but uh, from my perspective, the ceiling of this this season is over. You muted, John. Yeah. Does it I, feel like that to you, by the way, that the the ceiling of this season? Because to me, it seems obvious that the ceiling of the season rests on Ananobi. And what I don't think it's as much whether he can come back. I, I would. I'll just say this: today's news was not shocking to me. If we got news to, later today or tomorrow that OG Ananobi has decided to shut it down for the year, I would be utterly floored. I would be shocked beyond belief. How he looks when he comes back, I think, is a, is an interesting question. But do you, A, do you think that's a fair statement that it all rests or the ceiling by and large rests on him coming back? And I guess part like it, it, in conjunction with that question slash statement is that. Are we are we have we lost the plot at this point with that and we should just be like. At the end of the day, what does it fucking matter? Like, we're not winning a championship this year. Like, does does it still matter, basically? Well, what is the season isn't over mean to you? Like, they can still what with Ananobi? Like, to me, the fact that there's a team here with Ananobi that could still, like, I don't know, take a couple games off Boston in a series with that. Season. Like, if you are a team that is capable of making it to... I think the a conference finals, and I would proffer that a team with Ananobi, a full, fully or mo almost fully healthy version of Ananobi, could still this team could have that ceiling. To me, that is a hashtag meaningful result. Like you have accomplished something as a franchise, even if you did not win a championship. And so, to me, that's why this conversation still does matter, even if I think their championship equity has gone down to zero today. Um, but. You know, reasonable minds may differ about that. Well, if, if that's the ceiling you think with Ananobi, and I don't know if I think that they can get to a conference final with Ananobi, but if that is, I think, the absolute ceiling, then yeah, the season's not over because you're still holding out hope for a trip to the conference final. The way Milwaukee's looked lately, the way Cleveland has looked lately, they're the Knicks with Ananobi, I put them probably in that conversation. I think there were some of us, maybe I'm in this camp, that – Wanted to see what that January version of this team looked like with Randall, with of Ananobi, of which is why that season, those aspirations are over. And I think I think a lot of us had started to come around on the fact we're never going to see that version of this team over the last week or so. That this after year. This the, year. Yeah, this year. This year. That this year, that's not going to happen. So that's why I think I just lean 
but it's so much less about the Knicks and the basketball of it all. And I'm just, I feel awful for Julius. Cause yeah, no, it, the guy has been, I got this. I, the, 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 the last couple of years he's, I mean, from us, he's taking criticism and from the fan base, he's taking criticism. He's just a nothing, but make all NBA teams and all-star teams, which is something not a lot of people have come here and done. And after coming here as a consolation prize to Katie and Kyrie yeah. to being like, just to speak for me personally, like the first good thing I enjoyed post pandemic is just something that's always going to matter to me. And the fact that they looked like they had a team that was going to make a deep playoff run and have him part of it. And this year that's not going to happen. is just a genuine bummer. And it's why I think, you know, I wish him a speedy recovery and I wonder if, I mean, the off season's a, a different question, but it's why that that that's the mood I'm coming at this with this, today. This dude finished eighth in MVP voting mm-hmm. in the We Here season. Eighth in MVP voting. Like Kevin Durant is probably not going to finish eighth in MVP voting this season. Like, and he's actually played all the games, you know? Like, like really, just like put LeBron James is probably not going to fit, and he's had an all NBA caliber. Like, that's the talk, that's what we're talking about with this player is meant to this franchise. So, yeah, I, I don't know that there's anything more to say, but so we've got nine super chats. All right. Um, little birdie told me that you're being the, the bat, the max signal went out. So, um, we'll try to get as many as we can done in the next. Uh, 15 minutes so that way we can get you off to to, to SNY. Um, so we'll start here with Chris Carter. Okay, I feel terrible for Julius first and foremost. I've been critical in the past, but I've never questioned his toughness or his dedication to his teammates. That's my major takeaway. That's my major takeaway is like, I think, if, listen, man, if you're someone out there, if it's a Nick fan that's never been critical of Julius Randle, take a bow truly take a bow you deserve to um but at this point if there's anyone left who still questions what this guy is all about and what he cares about and what drives him just like his metal you know it's you know it's a tough world out there um and he gives it his all and he wants to be there and i think he i think he cares about being a great teammate which I, I get if you, you watch some of the blowups he's had with quickly and Fournier and whatever. And you'd be like, really? No, I think he's an emotional guy. That's what that is, but he cares. His heart's in the right place. So this is a non super chat, but I think a necessary one. Sure. Fred Katz. I was told on this podcast just yesterday that Randall might play hack. Yeah, we should. I, could you, I forget who was on, we had on yesterday, but can you just make sure we eliminate that person from the Rolodex? Just rip the page yep. out of the Rolodex. Never having that person on this show ever again. They are officially the first band guest, <clears throat> excuse me, of the Knicks Film School podcast. Um, yeah. Smart yeah. move. If we want to use this moment just to, I thought you kind of nailed it in the, the newsletter. Uh, the irresponsible reporting, not I from said, Fred. I but, said it. I said it during the the opening monologue. It, Even more, but if you want to just like whoa, no, it, Shams, like it it does not have to be like weeks, well, not months, just, but we're months later, guys. And it, it's it's reaffirmation, and these are someone else's words, not mine, that I'm stealing, and and he knows who he is that I'm stealing from. Those guys are not reporters; those are PR guys. Those are PR guys, and if anything, you want to say this was a botched PR job. That's fine, you know. Right. That's fine. That's fine. Busy, what's going on, my friend? Uh, good to see you so soon after last night. Does the increase does this increase or decrease the chances of getting him getting traded in the offseason? Asking for a friend. Sure, you are busy. I would say decrease. I don't know how you could look at this as anything other than it decreases his chances, just because it's very it's math to me. If a fully healthy Julius Randle, if you have a chance to trade him. You have a chance to trade a fully healthy Julius Randle at 100 cents on the dollar. Even considering a fully healthy Julius Randle, because of the questions that as I don't need to tell you, we've all had about his game and his fit as like a number three, because, well, if he's not good enough to be a top two, then he has to be number three. And then what is he as a top three? Does he do enough without the ball? Does he defend enough? Does he shoot well enough? All that shit. Because you were always going to have ch- trouble 
getting 100 cents for the dollar on him, even when he's fully healthy. Well, now, guess what? You're really going to have trouble getting 100 cents on the dollar for him just because of the unknown. Even if every single medical report is like the surgery went great. There's nothing about this particular type of injury or this particular type of surgery that would uh, predict lingering problems into the future. Even if all of that is true, a team is still going to be like, really? We're giving you full value for this guy? Like, they're not going to do that. The only thing that I would say as an asterisk, as a caveat or whatever, is if the Knicks looked at this as was like, you know what? Because of he's kind of a funky fit on a lot of teams, we were never getting close to 100 cents on the dollar anyway. We were always probably going to have to accept 75 or 80 or whatever cents on the dollar. Well, now it's 60 or 65 because we can get this guy. I don't know who this guy is, but let's say this guy emerges as a trade candidate. Do they just look at it and be like, fuck it. Like, this is what we have to do for the betterment of our franchise. And I guess the main takeaway for me is like, do I think Leon Rose and his group will hesitate for one single solitary second to make a move if it involves Julius Randle? If you think if they think it'll make them a better team? No, I do not. I do not. Dom Cappuccini, man, you're you you mm. put your money where you're about this. Thank you for the incredible, incredible generosity here. I know you're feeling it today probably as much as anyone because um, you just bleed blue and orange as much as any fan I know, frankly. So kudos to you and my, my condolences. Surprisingly, I am more relieved than disappointed. Wow, this is not what I thought I was going to be getting from Dom. I guess because I knew Julius playing in pain is more hurtful than helpful. I hope for a speedy and safe recovery for him and his family. I've never been a number his number one fan, but I really appreciate the effort. You know what, Dom? You should uh, be hosting this or writing uh, emergency newsletters because that is as salient a point as I have heard. And um, specifically, could you imagine a world where he comes back and he says he's healthy, team says he's healthy enough to play, swear up and down, healthy enough to play, and he comes back and he's in pain and he plays like shit in the playoffs. And even further than that, plays like shit in the playoffs, and they lose in part, or at least arguably, because he played like shit. Well, then what then? Is it, we got to trade Julius? Or, no, we can't trade Julius because he was hurt. But, well, if he's still hurt, then we all the more reason to trade him because now it's either he's go, he stays with this injury or he gets the surgery and then he's out for all of next year or fire Tibbs for not pulling Julius sooner or altogether or whatever. It would open up the fucking unholy mother of Pandora's boxes, the likes of which we have never seen before. This today takes all of that off the table. So in that sense, I, I hear you and I think I'm with you. Maybe it is appropriate to be more relieved than disappointed because we don't have to deal with any of those questions now. You know, maybe maybe we'll have to deal with some version of that with OG if and when he comes back. But I I don't know. I think we'll we'll, we'll kind of have a better sense with Randall. It's so it's so it's so tough, especially the nature of the injury. I think we got another one coming from Dom. Uh, yes. And with that being said, let's move on now and hope for the best for OG and no more injury. Bad luck. Let's go next. Amen to that. Um, really. Amen to that. And I again, I'm I'm going to be excited for tonight's game. I'm hoping they could win. I want to get that playoff spot. I want to get a top five playoff spot. Let's go. Let's go. Season's not over. Thank you, Dom. That's a really, really, really great point that had eluded me in two hours since the injury. Ryan Huang, what's going on, Ryan? I blame Fred for officially reporting that Randall will come back just yesterday. Nice jinx. Uh, yeah, he definitely did jinx him. I uh, guess this means OG is done for the season two. No, I don't know why anybody would jump to that conclusion. Ryan Huang is correct. Thank you, Fred. Fred Katz himself. Um, no, seriously, though, Ryan, I don't know why you jumped to that conclusion. You're muted. Because Fred also said that Oh, I get, yes, I get it now. I get it now. It's a continuation of the same joke. A lot of, <laughs> lot of thoughts and feelings and things going through my mind, body, and, and soul. I missed that. Good. I'm sorry, Ryan. Good job. Very buddy. good joke, Ryan. You're that good. was very good. It was such a good joke. It went over my head, which you know, if it goes over my head, it's a good joke. Not too quick on the uptake. Jason M., what's going on? Jason, 
Great to hear from you, man. Huge opportunity missed this season. Uh, yeah, I mean, sure. Because you you would have had, because at the very least, at the very least, that would have been insanely valuable evidence to see, all right, what do we look like with this version before the trade? You know, you never know how the team's going to improve in the future. They had a real shot this season. That's incredibly fair. Um, I guess I will comfort myself in saying, like, looking around at the other Eastern Conference, top Eastern Conference teams, I'm not like, can, can Boston get any better? No. Milwaukee, I don't see it. Cleveland, I don't see it. Like Orlando will get better. They may, maybe they go out and swing a big trade this summer. Maybe they're the, maybe they're the scariest team in terms of a jump waiting. Um, but I would still think that they're at least a year away, but we'll see. What's your heart out? Oh, I, I got another f- uh, four minutes. Okay. Stevens Giamma, what's going on? Stevens, hello, darkness, my old friend. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, Stevens. You're again, you're another one's great fan. You've been with us for a long time. Obviously, you've been with this team forever. It's a tough blow for a franchise and a fan base. It's we've had a lot of tough blows. We've had a lot of tough blows. We've also had some great, great times in over these last four years. The we here year, last year, this year, a lot of this year. Like I, I'm gonna still. Uh, well, I'll, I don't know. I don't know if I should say I'm still going to come away from this year feeling positive. As of right now, I could certainly see a world where I come out of this year feeling like, you know what? Yeah, it was what could have been. Yeah, we only had that one month. But, like, a lot of great shit happened this year. Think about all the players that have emerged and we have latched on to as lifelong fans of these players. The Josh Hart's and Dante DiVincenzo's and Deuce McBride's and Isaiah Hardenstein's. All these guys that got a chance to really show their stuff because it was necessary because they have to have the opportunity to do so to say nothing of Jalen Brunson leading the league in usage since Julius went down and showing himself to be a grade a superstar in this league. Jessica, what's going on? Jess, it's great to hear from you. I'm so sad for Julius. He must be devastated. I'm sure he is. Love Randall as a player a person. He's my favorite unpopular opinion, but he is. Three cheers to Julius, our Ewing, imperfect, a Nick through and through. That's really well said. There's a lot more cops to Ewing than I think a lot of people would let on. Ewing was, I mean, Ewing was a, 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 a better player than Julius, but like, you're, I don't think you're suggesting that Julius is like a better player than Ewing, but in terms of how he was viewed often by the fan base, like the fan base dragged Ewing's name through the mud, you know, and all that dude did was was part of winning teams. And that's unfortunately been the case for Julius. Hopefully, here's another silver lining. Maybe this makes us appreciate Julius more. Um, We'll see. Rich McLeod, what's going on, Rich? Good to hear from you, my friend. The year isn't over, but feeling like 2023-24 is the what-if Knicks season. Stay strong, Knicks friends. Recover well, Julius. Yeah. Might be. I I, I kind of alluded to this in today's newsletter the one that went out at 5 a.m. I think now we could probably put this down as the top five ever. What if for the Knicks? And it looks like we got one more. This one from Will Oliver. What's going on, Will? Well, I guess we could see OG's true ceiling value. It's one way to look at it. I kind of have an idea of like what, what he is. And I am, I'll just say this. If he comes back, I'll be as excited as all hell to see what that team could do because I think they could still be pretty good. Lower ceiling, lower ceiling for sure. I still think they could be pretty good. And on that note, if you want to stick with me, uh, head over to any of SNY's platforms. But before you do that, please do me a favor. Subscribe to this channel. Leave a thumbs up on this video. And if you are listening to this in podcast form later today or tomorrow, whenever, um, you know, subscribe, rate, review, the whole thing. Tough day. Tough day, but we shall survive, as we always do. Later, everybody.